hello, my name is Katrina. I am a freelance graphic designer and I also have an Etsy shop where I sell cards, stickers, that type of thing, and notepads. Um, I should definitely mention notepads, which is what we're gonna be making today. These are the notepads I make. They're basically just like a plain, simple notepad with the glue together that you can tear off a sheet. Cardboard bark barking. <laughs> Cardboard backing. I'm sure you've all seen a notepad like this before and it's not that exciting. Um, so we're going to be making those today and what you're going to need to do this is first of all all the pages printed out. It looks like it's a blank page but I promise you that there's something there. So I print them up three up because that's how many fit on a page. Obviously you can just print out one but to save paper, just try to put as many as possible on a page. You're also gonna need glue to glue this together. The glue that you need to get is padding glue. I just bought it at Amazon. I'm sure if you went to like a specialty paper or book making store, they would have it, but I just got it from Amazon. It is quite expensive, but it's I've had this for a while and it's lasted. I actually have two containers of it because I'm silly and I briefly lost the cap to this. But I've made a lot of notepads with this, so it's expensive, but it'll last you a while. You also need some binder clips to hold things together. Paintbrush to... The dust flew off that. Paintbrush to glue things together. And an X-Acto knife to... I'll show you what you'll need that for. That's not a necessary thing to have. That's like a nice to have. A ruler also for measuring. And then you're going to need a big pile of books or like a board and something heavy to do the gluing. I'll show you why later. I don't think I, I didn't talk about the biggest, most important thing, uh, which is the cutter. This cutter here is like an industrial cutter. You don't need one of these. I'm gonna show you the method I use with this, but I'll also share like how you can do it if you don't have this. Like it's, it's pretty much the same. It's just one thing in a different order, so. Let's get started. So first we're gonna take this. This is all my sheets. I have 50 sheets here and then uh, card backing. Once you have that, you're gonna take it here. Um, if you don't handle paper a lot, if you do like this and get it, get some air in there and get nice and fluffy, better align. So after all that smacking the paper around, you're gonna <laughs> take your ruler and measure from the bottom to where you're gonna cut. So this is my page setup. You can see I have three of the notepad designs printed out. Um, so what I'm gonna do is measure here from the end of the page to where I wanna cut. Before you do any cuts, you're going to want to make sure you fluff out your pages. This just makes everything even. We're going to put it in for the first cut. So this is also one of the steps if you have a smaller cutter that can't cut 50 pages at one time. You're just going to have to divide it into smaller pieces and cut it that way. Also, if you have a Cricut and you have a lot of patience, you can cut it with Cricut. Personally, I find cutting one page on the Cricut very slow, so I can't imagine doing like 50 pages. Also, if you have a lot of patience, you can cut it out by hand with an X-Acto knife or scissors. Obviously, if you're just doing this for fun, it doesn't have to be like perfect, but if you're selling it, you're gonna have to <laughs> be more patient than I am or have a big cutter. So yeah, we're just gonna stick it in here and then clamp this down and you're gonna wanna make sure it's very clamped down. Safety cut. Honestly though, this cutter is like the best thing I've spent money on in a while. It's so good, I love it. Obviously not everyone needs this. So now that I'm done my first cut, I'm gonna go ahead and glue this all together and wait till that dries and then I'm gonna cut it down further. 
If you have a smaller cutter that you're going to have to do in multiple pieces, you're going to want to continue cutting it until it's down to this size and then you'll do the gluing. Basically, it's the same thing, just different order. I just like doing it this way because once it's all glued together and you're cutting on the big cutter, you get a nice clean cut. Whereas there's more messing around trying to get everything organized, what's the word? Get like all the papers even if you like cut them down fully and then glue. But yeah, it's totally doable. I did do it that way for a while before. But if you have a big cutter, I do it this way. Same thing, different order. <laughs> now that I've cut it, I'm gonna want to make sure everything is nice and even again. Do a little of this, a little clump. I like to measure it up on here a bit because it just gives me a good surface. So once you've got everything as even as possible, you're going to want to take your binder clips and clamp things down here. I just do it on the edges. That doesn't seem very straight. Now that I've got my edges clamped, I'm going to move this down to here and I'll show how it looks. But you're going to want to get the edge as close to the other edge, <laughs> the table, as possible. And then you're going to pile a bunch of books on. You're going to want to keep the clips on there and then pile the books on top. I find that the clips kind of help the edges stay together where the books kind of keep the middle part together, if that makes sense. I'll show a better view of what I'm doing over here, but now we're gonna move on to the next step, which is gluing everything together. And I'll show you what I've done over here and get a better view. I think I repeated myself. Okay, so now that you're over here, you can kind of see a better view of what I'm talking about. This is the paper, and well, you can't really see the paper. Oh my God. <laughs> Let me try this again. <laughs> Now you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. I have the binder clips keeping the edges down and then the books on top. Basically you're trying to get like the smallest amount um, of overhang from the paper with keeping the clips on and also being able to like paint it. Um, so yeah, this is the glue I use, which is a better view of it. Just padding glue, padding compound, most basics of labels. Um, this is just a paintbrush I got from the dollar store because I don't want to ruin any nice paintbrushes with glue. Um, like a flat kind of wide one is best for this. Though I haven't tried any other ones but this one just makes the most sense. So yeah we're gonna be starting to do some gluing. Um, I usually go downward to start and then to the side you're going to want to be careful that you don't put too much glue on because that can kind of warp the paper. Like if you get paper wet, it doesn't stay straight. If that, is that a good explanation? I don't know if that's the best explanation of that. You're just going to want to do a thin, even layer across here. I feel like I'm on art attack. <laughs> the dream. I practice for this. Um, so yeah, you're just going to keep adding it all the way across until you've got a thin, even layer. So if you're doing it this way, of course, you don't have to print the white parts on the edge um, where you pass your cut lines because that's not going to be a part of the final product. But yeah, just paint all across where it's gonna be a part of a final notepad. Okay, so now that we've done a layer, we're gonna wait 10 to 15 minutes until this dries and then come back. And I usually do about three to four layers, kind of just depending. Um, I think three layers is fine. I sometimes do four, but whatever your preference is. <laughs> so yeah, I think I'm actually gonna go run some errands and then come back and we're gonna do the rest of the layers later. So I came back and everything is dry. You can just run your fingers along it here 
and see if it's dry or not. Um, and it's dry, so it's time for another coat. Um, you don't have to wait that long and actually go run errands. You can just wait 10 or 15 minutes and wait to see if it's dry. I just had to do a couple things before the store closed. So yeah, now we're gonna go ahead and just paint along here. Same thing, repeat two more times after this. Three or four, it just depends how thin your layers are and yeah. Once this is done, it will be dry in like 15 minutes, but I usually like to wait like an hour or maybe even longer before I cut it. Um, even though it is dry, it's still like not as strong, if that makes sense. Like it's okay to add more glue to it, but when you're like clamping it down and cutting it, it's better just to wait a bit longer. So I'm going to come back to this in like an hour or two and then do the cutting part. Uh, make sure I wash my brush first. Hello, it is quite a few hours later. If the background has changed, that's because I have put on my sheets and cleaned up a few things behind me since I last filmed. Um, I didn't mean to wait this long, but my neighbors were having like people outside and it was really loud and I had to eat dinner and I got distracted. Um, but now it is time to finish up these notepads. Don't usually glue the books to that. Okay, so these are all glued. I'm just gonna go along with my X-Acto knife and get rid of any of the excess glue just because I don't want it sticking to my cutter at all. I'm gonna do this afterwards as well, but I just wanna go ahead and do it now just because I don't want it gunking up my cutter. Okay, okay, so now that all the extra glue and gunk is off, as soon as I talk, he has to move. What you doing? He's self-conscious. He knows he's being watched. As soon as I start talking and doing this, he's gonna move. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the other cuts. If you've already So now we're going to go ahead and do the rest of the cuts on this. If you have a smaller cutter, you've already done that part, um, but you can also watch this just to see how I do it if you're not quite sure. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. It's basically the same as the first cut. I'm just going to go ahead and measure from the end of the paper to where I want to cut, and then I kind of go and look at both sides and see which one is a more even number, like closer to a line. That's just the way I do it. Um, also, when you're cutting things, especially if you have a big cutter like this, it's better to go bigger to smaller, and then you're not moving it back and forth, back and forth. That's just, it's not necessary. It's just something that will make it a little bit easier for you. So yeah, this is 10 and a quarter. We're gonna use our weak little hands. 10 and a quarter.
don't think I tightened that enough, so that might have meant. Okay, so for cutting, um, I already said that you want to go biggest to smallest just for ease of this. Another thing you want to keep in mind is that you're not cutting off all your cut marks and then you have um, no idea of where you're meant to cut. So now that I've done the one cut over here, I'm going to go ahead and do this cut over here. It's easier to go from like biggest to smallest when you're cutting things. But you also want to keep in mind um, that you need the cut marks to cut. So you can see they're all at the bottom here. So I don't want to cut off these ones first. So basically you want to work um, in a way that like the cut, there's the most cut marks possible. Like think ahead, think of what you need to cut and make sure that the cut marks are going to be there when you need them. You can measure some things. I'll show you that in a second. But just keep in mind you're going to want to cut this bottom one close to the end. I don't know how well I explained that. I've been doing this for a while, so I have to stop and think about an easy way to explain it. I just want to turn this and tighten this as much as possible. I think it was a little loose last time, so it did leave a little dent on the side there. Thing in mind, our next cut is going to be from here to six and a half. one side each cut for here so we can just basically we know this is three inches this one's three inches and the height is seven inches which is the final size so I can just move my thing to that and then we know that everything will be the right size in the end I do still have cut marks here as guide but I know the final size is three by seven So the final step here is to go over with the X-Acto knife and just get off any excess glue. Usually the back there's a bit of a ridge. So I just go again here and scrape some of that off. And then usually I find some soaks on the front paper. Um, you can like glue scrap paper on the front. Um, but what I like to do is just do an extra page and then rip it off. Um, I have tried just like exacto cutting it in the past, but I find the rip is just a cleaner line. Um, but I still like to go over this just to make everything perfect because sometimes the rip leaves a bit of a ripped edge, I guess. <laughs> so this just makes it clean and straight. We have a notepad. So I totally forgot to film an ending for this video. It is months later and I'm finally getting to editing it and I just wanted to come on here and end the video. And I hope that I did a good job explaining this. Please let me know if you have any questions about anything and I will do my best to answer it. And thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.